He wasn't in the squad on four occasions. <laughs> he was suspended once, an unused sub once, and subbed off the other two. <laughs> Ab just goes to him, why don't you sign Pete? How do you feel about signing our Pete? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> that is genius. I suppose it's the pinnacle of my career, and then obviously, like, it didn't go to plan. Mm. So, um, thanks for bringing it up, though. No, it's all right. <laughs>Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch, Chris Stark and Statman Dave all with me as usual. We've got a special guest with us today. Yeah, buzzing for this. And um, well, do you want to introduce who it is? And then okay. let's, let's just get straight into this. Okay, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Nile Horns yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm good. Yeah. Thanks for having me, boys. No, I'm so I'm so pleased you're on. So, cast. Well, this yeah. is it. Like, you listen to the podcast and we've been trying to get you on for ages yeah. and it's, it's hard because you're in LA a lot of the time. Yeah. And so it's just like, we'd rather get you somewhere we can have a beer and make yeah. this kind of work properly. Mm. But it's good to finally get you on. Yeah. We, uh, so we ended up in a workspace in yeah, <laughs> right yeah, yeah. It's very, it's very different. <laughs> very different oh, to what we're used to, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not, I don't know. How do you feel about it? It's not exactly our normal setting, is it's it? Not, the like floors are not sticky. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's quite like, there's trendy people outside and stuff. It's like, mm. it's not the usual vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got kind of taken into this room. It was almost like trying to sneak someone after a, um, like a walk of shame almost. Yeah, we were kind yeah. of like... <laughs> Ushered along a yeah, corner yeah. here into a corner yeah. room, like you're you not know. sneaking him in here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but this is great. This is what it's all about. And we're so pleased you could be on. Nah, thanks for having me. Um, where should we kick this off then? So you're a massive Derby fan, right? Yeah. Let's start there. Yeah, Let's start yeah. There. I've, got, I've got, I've got so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I got so many questions, and the first one is obviously why. Yeah, how, and how, who, what, where, yeah. when, why? Um, well, in the early seventies, my dad was ten, eleven in Ireland listening to the, the wireless. <laughs> um, at the time, we were, you know, we got two promotions, won the league. We were like the, the best team and with Brian Clough was the manager. Yeah. So when you're getting into football at that time, it was like Leeds or Derby, effectively, who were like the high-flying mm. teams. And then it was just, once he <clears throat> started working and making his own money, he'd go over every other week or, you know, to try and get over to, to England on the ferry or whatever to see... Because it's not, like, if you're Irish, it's Man United or Liverpool, mm. even if you're 70-odd. Um, but, yeah, he would make the trip over to, to England every week or every other week to watch Derby and, and then carried it on into our our childhoods. And I went to my first Derby game when I was, like, four. Well, I love that. It's like proper fan stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, it's good to hear that. But what, what was your era then? Because I remember, obviously, the Derby team of, like, I'm talking Ravinelli, Mark yeah. Poom, uh, Malcolm Christie. That exact team. Is, that's the team, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Like, kind of late 90s, yeah. uh, early 2000s, just when they moved into Pride Park. It was like, mm. yeah, Ravinelli, uh, mm. Iranio. Yeah, good uh, team. Yeah, Christie, Danny Higginbottom, Mark yeah. Poom. Yeah. yeah, where are they now? <laughs> yeah, there's there's this great so story true. about Ravinelli, right? And um, obviously, we wanted to do a bit of research on Derby, and any Derby fan that's listened to this, obviously, we were going to talk about Derby because yeah. Niles on, and it says um, it says here that Ravinelli once refused to pay the milkman, <laughs> claiming he should be honoured to be delivering milk to him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. That's a stat in itself. Yeah, where, uh, were you, where were you for that well, one? <laughs> I was going to go on to dive a little bit more into right. this. Um, at Middlesbrough, was the, they were sponsored by Cellnet. And once um, Ravenelli racked up a five grand phone bill, which he hadn't paid... But then he obviously did some a bit of a bit of a cheeky little side hustle with them. And when he scored, he celebrated, pulled up his shirt, Cellnet on the thing, two grand a goal... Paid there, his bill. There you go. Right. Bill paid. Right. Well Remember played. the Derby fans used to say, we've got Fabrizio, you've got fuck all you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, that's <laughs> but that's, uh, that's amazing about your dad. So your dad would travel. I mean, that's yeah. a lot for a home fan to travel. It yeah. was almost like an away game every time you went, right? Yeah, and like, he wouldn't be on a lot of money. We were like, you know, from a working class town, he, he was working in Tesco. Like, it wasn't like we were on loads of money, but any money we, de we did have, we were... Derby through and through, and he like for instance he was at Derby Shrewsbury two all draw on Saturday like we're we go quite a lot. Wow! I've been to a few games myself this season. I went to Milton Keynes away, I went to Portsmouth away, going to Oxford tomorrow. Yeah, but you're doing a bit like your dad is in. You're sometimes travelling from LA to go to Derby. Games. <laughs> yeah, it's like you've almost gone. So my dad's travelled quite a bit. It's almost like you've had Watch to one up it uh, yeah. by going. Like, I'll yeah. go from the other side of the world. Uh, Can you go LAX to Milton Keynes direct? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't even have to stop at Heathrow. It's brilliant. 
<laughs> How involved are you with the football club? Are you involved at a level that you like? Would you like to do more? Uh, do you want, not want to do that and keep it special? No. I, I like to, I like just want fan. to be a fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get that. I'd want to leave it out because, mm. you know, I think like, yeah, you just want, you don't want to get caught up in that stuff because... I knew the last owner a little bit and that went Pete Tong yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it was like I'd go into the stand and it was like let's speak to have a chat with him will you get him to sort it out it's like I'm don't, not sorting that don't one want that. I don't, I don't yeah. want anything to do with it is that what most, <laughs> is that what most football what fans found, say to you yeah, I remember getting cornered in the toilets at, um, <laughs> at uh, Birmingham City away last season and they were like have a chat with him. What's going on here? You know him. You're the only one that can speak for us. I was like, I don't, I don't know him that well. Yeah, I don't know yeah, his finances. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your disguise when you go to the football? What have you got? Have you got to wear like a ballet? Yeah. Is it a hat on? What are you going with? I'm thinking I, that when you're Milton Keynes away, right? That was brilliant. Uh, yeah, okay. but like, how do you, how do you? Can you get away with it? Yeah, do you know what? I've been going that long. A lot of the away fans know, like, know my dad. You see them, all the fans going up to him. All right, Bobby. You know, like it's yeah. like the, that well known <laughs> not even right. just for me just like from the years of going mm -hmm. and he tend to go to a lot of away games we there took 10,000 fans to, to MK Dons that day it was like that was the whole thing it was trying to get as many down there as possible it was great I just go in with a hat and then uh, I remember when the, during the pandemic uh, or after the pandemic I just would still wear a mask because you know, because yeah, yeah. it helped, but it didn't help this night. There, remember, one fella comes up and goes, in the toy, again, in the, in the jacks. It all seems to happen in the jacks at football. That's where you need to meet yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. He just goes, get yourself in there, guys. He goes, we'll have a, a load of fans, won't we? The Derby games. <laughs> yeah. And he just goes to me, no, we fucking know it's you. <laughs> he's just, I'm the only one with a mask on. But I was doing that for a while. I was doing that because I've got I've got the train hat, right? Yeah. I wear it. I'm still eight foot. Yeah. But I have a hat, but I have a hat on. And then uh, I was doing the mask as well, and it was just like, yeah, there's yeah. Peter Crouch with a hat and a mask on. Yeah. yeah. He said the sweetest It's like that Groucho Marx, um, you know, the glasses with the fake nose, you know that. Yeah. But they, he did it genuinely once. We were. Do you remember we were in a car somewhere? I can't remember if we've talked about this, and we needed to get down. Busy street in London. We need to get down Oxford Street or Regent Street, mm. wherever we were. Yeah. And um, there was loads of traffic. So he turned around to me and was like, let's just run. It's like 10 minute run. It'll be like half hour, 40 minutes in the car. Yeah. We'll, and we'll just run it. And do you remember yeah, we, we ran? It. Yeah, I remember. But he was like, <laughs> so no one recognises us. Yeah. I've got a hat and I've got a spare one. So you put it on like, like I need it. Right? <laughs> and then we ran and it was like... It was like Del Boy and Rodney. Del Boy. <laughs> Do you remember oh, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down the middle of the street. <laughs> and then everyone's leaning out going, nah. like, who's Peter Crouch is just running yeah. through. <laughs> and Arnold there's the short fat man next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Is what it is. Uh, but I think it's, it's an interesting... We had suits on as well for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, yeah, it was horrendous. It was a weird oh, vibe, that. Two numpties. Yeah. It, was, it was horrendous. Middle of the road. But I think it's interesting your position at that club because I like the idea that fans think that you could sort it. <laughs> and okay. I don't know, if I was in your position, I would probably... I would probably want to help a bit more. Yeah. And it's what Ed Sheeran does say with yeah. um, Ipswich. Mm -hmm. And it's hard probably, I imagine, to keep that restraint, uh, to just enjoy it as a fan. Yeah, I just thought, I don't want to get too deep into it. I, I, I've enjoyed my, since I was, as long as I can remember being a Derby County fan. And mm. I, I kind of, I'd like to keep it like that. If I can help in any way, like around the, the area mm. or, you know, just still with an outsider's view. Are you a bit yeah. annoyed? Are you, are you annoyed in any way that the fans haven't used one of your songs as a chant yet? Yeah. <laughs> It's really annoying. <laughs> I know. Do you know what they do when they win? They sometimes I have a song called Black and White. Uh, yeah. And they play that when if we win. Oh, that's cool. They, when the full time whistle goes, they yeah, play that through true. the tannoy, which is Does that mean a lot to you? Yeah, that's class. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's great to me. Um yeah, but I just I love the fact that I'm able to go to all the away games and went to Portsmouth away on a Friday night on the train with a few of my mates and singing like the rest of them. I, I, I just, I like to keep it that way. Yeah. Mm. That's cool. Uh, you know. I've seen you at the darts actually, and I've got to say, like my from an outsider point of view watching you enjoy the darts because i was in the cheap seats <laughs> oh yep oh yeah and you were on the boring boring tables yeah, at the boring, time boring tables. at ali pally and you were having a lovely time mate yeah you were getting well into it's it it's great yeah you just have to hope that the sky cameras don't turn to you at any point yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to you'll have to come to crouch fest because crouch fest is very much like oh, the darts you know yeah. so did you hear about crouch fest yeah i was good i was i was there was something on that night 
few of my mates went. Mm. Um, but I, I couldn't have it. Love to. Yeah, yeah. Next one. Next, next one. Next time, mate. Next Crouch one. Next is coming, isn't it? Yeah. It's coming. What do you make of Derby at the minute then? Obviously in turmoil at the moment. Yeah. Um, with with Wayne Rooney as a manager, how mm. did you how did you find him? Yeah, Wayne was great. Um, yeah, I just think after the the whole deal fell through the last time, he was probably better off getting out there. <laughs> mm. um, but it was it's good to see it now. He's got local property developer come in and bought the club mm. and didn't want to see it go under. From what I gathered, we were very close to completely going under. Mm. Um, so well, that would have been an absolute disaster. One of the founding members of the league just this That's horrific, it. isn't it? <laughs> How this is allowed to happen? Like our um, producer George is a Berry fan yeah. and Berry That's don't exist anymore. Up. It's like, mm. it, you do find it, like how how can it be allowed to happen? It's you know, not. a club like Derby as well with the history. It's, it's, it's cr crazy, yeah. But anyway, it's happening sadly. But um, anyway, we're back and we're in, we're fifth in League One at the moment. Yeah. And good thing about, the good thing about League One is there's about 90 games a season. So if you lose a couple <laughs> on the trot, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can turn it, you can turn it around. With, uh, with Wayne yeah. Rooney, did you see him, Crouch, he getting into that manager Role. Did you always see him? He always that fancied way? himself, you know. Like he always, he always said, "I'm going to go into management, and you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that." He, he always fancied it, and like mm. you know, he's been such a legend. And I think when you're that sort of high profile and mm. such a good player, you know, play, I know what I'd be like. You want to, you want to impress Wayne Rooney, don't you? As a, as a player, yeah. And I think, yeah, he's, he's, he's got, a, he's got a good chance. He's doing things right. He's going and earning his, his stripes, you know, yeah. out in America now, and you know, hopefully, he comes back stronger. Yeah. <laughs> Always. From his time at Derby, is, was there parts that you, you saw Derby and you thought that is like top top level? That's like Premier League management quality. He was de there, like the way he wanted to play. I think this is always the case with Derby, but especially when Wayne was there, the way he wanted to play was great. Mm. Didn't have the players to do it, and that's that's half the battle when you're a manager, I suppose. You, you have a certain way you want to play, high tempo, press, you know, all the good stuff that we. You know, the rock and roll football that has been played now. But when, if you don't have a Wayne Rooney running the show, <laughs> uh, yeah. do you know what I mean? But that's why he wanted to be on, right? Yeah. That was the yeah. thing. He's yeah. the most yeah. frustrated manager of all time when he can't play yeah, yeah. himself, yeah. which is kind of why I think it started that way of him being able to both play and, and exactly. coach. Exactly, yeah. Because he had other issues, didn't he? He, couldn't, he had players that he couldn't play because they weren't on contracts. They had other players <laughs> that, that just left because they would, you know, they haven't been paid for two, three months. Yeah. It, was, it became a disaster. He was there like... I heard, don't know how true it is, but he was like, it got to the point where he was like paying for training kit and like he bought like a drone for the club to fly over so he could, what you know, look computerized, get all the software up for the training wow. session. And um, yeah, I went down to, they were training at Penny Hill Park in Surrey there one time yeah. and he asked me, to, he said, do you want to come down and watch training? And I got a good insight as to how their meetings worked, him and Liam, him and Liam were senior yeah, at the he's time. He's good Liam Racine. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, very good. Yeah. I hope he does well. He's such a mm. nice fella. But yeah, their, their meetings got good insight as to what they were up to. But yeah, I just mm. think at the time, the, the, the players he had weren't just, we were never going to do anything really. The, mm. he, his idea was great. And I, I, like, he's such a nice fellow in, as, yeah. as you know. I hope he just smashed it. And you nearly got, like, Derby nearly stayed up as well. That's the incredible yeah. thing with the points deduction, the clean sheet record. They were was so close. One of the best yeah. in the league. It would have been the great escape, wouldn't it? would have been incredible, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was such a shame. Like, went right down to the last day, um, you know, or a few games to go. And it was, um, it was tense, but it just shows you like we we did all right considering we had Doc twenty one points and yeah we're still we're still alive. I think the, I think the general consensus around Derby is we're glad we still have a club. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like I, I think like I, when I stand in the crowd, there's, I've never seen them over the past like eighteen months. The fans so passionate because. Yeah. To, to a town, to a one club town like Derby, you know, you know you've played in like Stoke and it's a big well, obviously town Port Vale, well. big population as well, isn't it? A big working class town yeah. with like, you know, um, and knowing a lot of the people from the area, just everyone's just, we're just happy to ha still have a club. I don't, I don't want to be the guy to bring it up, but obviously Derby County, we've got a pretty bad record. Oh. 11 points in the Premier League. I was there for most of them. But, but looking at that, they had a 95% like fill rate of the stadium. So oh, really? they won one game in the entire season, but they basically they sold out every single that's week. And I think that's a great credit. start. Yeah, that yeah. is good. That it is, is good. Which, I mean, everyone... One. So you were all... I mean, all the fans were happy to sit through... Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like it, it was just it's more, it's more to probably go and see the, some of the best players in the world play. It's not it's, it's not for the suffering. Oh, yeah. I got to see Ronaldo play, seeing them all at that time. Yeah. Uh, I remember like getting thumped by Spurs, 4 0 beaten around the place by Arsenal. Um, like just getting beaten left, right, and centre. But 
Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I've gone back. I, one, one of the lads, thankfully, has um, has got some of my stats on playing derby, oh, which are uh, majestic. This is is bad. it majestic? Oh my god! Explain to Niall how poor you are. Yeah, but we've got it here. No offense to Darren Moore, you were probably playing against him. No, 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 <laughs> let me um, let me let me tell you my stats on derby. Yeah? You've this. definitely scored a couple, though. Haven't oh, you? mate, watch this. Listen to this. Crouch has faced derby eight times in his career. He wasn't in the squad on four occasions. <laughs> he was spe- suspend- suspended once, an unused sub once, and subbed off in the other two. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst record of all time. I tell you what, you'd find it hard to find another club where we're like... That you'd have a stat like games. that. Wasn't in the squad for four of them. That is outrageous. Uh, I mean, <laughs> as any standard of football goes, that is... I, I don't think... Woeful. I don't yeah. think it can get much worse. Well, I, 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 I remember not enjoying Pride Park yeah. ever. I think I played there with the under-21s and did all right. Yeah. But, but like, for a club level, I don't think I ever played well there. Yeah, you reckon? Why Good was ground. that? I don't know. I remember getting pumped by Stoke from St- when I played for Stoke. Um, I, I, I don't know. It was a difficult place to go. But yeah, well, you've got there. Niall's dad in the crowd screaming. Yeah, you got Bobby yeah, Horan yeah, screaming yeah. the place down. <laughs> <laughs> you're a good player yourself as well. I think we should right. touch on this, um, right? You're, you're Dave's half... got some stats. You must have some stats on Soccer Aid, have you? Yeah, so I was scouring the internet to try and find Soccer Aid 2000 and, uh, 2016 and 2019. Jeez, Are there what? stats out there? Uh, you see, I had to go and collect them myself, Crouchy. Sometimes so I, get, the game. I get stuck yeah, in. I went yeah, back yeah. and I watched the game. Watched yeah, but... Ronaldinho play, which was quite interesting. Dave, yeah. like... Uh, Derby, 95% of the crowd were there to see Niall. It was <laughs> arguably the noisiest. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, because it was a slightly different, it's fair to say, yeah, yeah. it was a slightly different crowd around that, you know, in terms of... Family um, crowd. Yeah, yeah, like the frequency of the yeah. crowd noise and the yeah, types yeah. of chants, oh, yeah. you know. It's mad every time you got the ball. I always remember it, it on TV, it was just like screams. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. get the ball much, mind you. How did you yeah. find it? How did you find it? So that? scary. Yeah. Like, a ha- like a third of the footballer that I am, you know, when you're playing a game like that, like it's so scary. Like playing, I played at Old Trafford the first time. I uh, played at Sanford Bridge the second time. And like, I'm passing the ball to like, Roberto Carlos I like <laughs> Drogba I like I remember like before the game at Stamford Bridge like me and me and Roberto Carlos pinging balls up and down the halfway line to, to each other I was like what oh, is this amazing amazing the only thing I have in common with him is I'm left footed yeah <laughs> that's about it so, so you'd say it's more daunting than like you know some of the massive shows you've oh, played yeah. like musically and, yeah. honestly like legs like Bambi couldn't really? like just couldn't wrap my head around it. Like, the whole time I was thinking, what if the ball comes to me? And like, you're just thinking mm. negative. It's like, what if I, my foot's like a trampoline when it gets to me? Yeah. How did he do, Dave? To be fair, it was, it was pretty decent. 15 minutes played, um, four touches of the football, completed 100% of his passes, which I think is a good statistic there out there. Nice. Um, there How many passes moments. did he do, though? Two or three. Uh, yeah, about, about two, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah. So he two completed passes. 100% of two passes? Uh, yes, which I think is you know, worth you putting what, out in I'll the... I'll take uh, that. Take yeah, that considering how I felt. But there was a few moments, though, where you span in behind really well. Ronaldinho didn't find you. Weirdly yeah, enough. Yeah. <laughs> Some great movement. Yeah. You're saying Some it was really Ronaldinho's fault. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, Ronaldinho yeah, yeah. was, um, you know, a little bit lavish on the ball. Wasn't playing the yeah, passes yeah, properly. Yeah. And you know, it's weird. He's never been like that. <laughs> <laughs> All the time you've known him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not been on for a step over. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, but I also have got Louis' stats as well from the game. Um, and unfortunately, was he in the same game? He played in the same game. He came on. Yeah, he came on in at right back, and you were playing on the left. Yeah, that's right. He only completed eighty-three percent of his passes. See, I was all yeah. over him. Oh, yeah, yeah, all yeah, over yeah. him. Okay, so, so you're, did, what you're saying, if you're picking one of the lads, yeah, you're picking Lyle. Oh, you are. Yeah, you're getting him in. You're getting him. Dave's sacking for it. Did he? Did Louis say do twenty passes? No, it was around six. Right. Completed right, five okay. out of six. Yeah, yeah. It was a few more, but then again, he's playing at the back. Who's more counting, space. lads? Who's yeah. counting? Yeah. 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 It's the great thing about Dave. You'll spin any stat. <laughs> yeah. It's good like that. Know. Try and spin that derby one for me, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can just put a few, put a few goals beside that one. Yeah. You know, throw another appearance in there. I scored a couple, <laughs> so at least played. <laughs> I, you, I swore you had scored I one. I thought I had as well. I swear on a Tuesday night. Well, I don't you know, know, the typical maybe Tuesday night at Stoke. Yeah, it might be that. Yeah, maybe it was at Stoke. Do you ever think yeah. like that? Do you ever think there's grounds that you haven't scored at? It's almost like you haven't like christened them properly. Yeah. yeah. You haven't completed Or you just get part. them out of your mind completely, surely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'd literally forgot that. Yeah, until yeah, until yeah. you turned up today, I had no recollection of ever playing Derby. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like this nightmare. <laughs> you can't sleep at night. <laughs> we should work out which grounds he hasn't scored at. 
for another time, Dave. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> not, not, not now. and then make right it now, happen but, for him. You yeah. know, he hasn't completed football until he scored. It. Well, he kind of has, but yeah, you know, yeah. tick them all off. Tick them off. Yeah, we could do yeah. if, maybe for charity where we set up a charity game and then mm. you bang a few goals in and we can tick it off. Yeah, we'll there you go. Out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll all right, well let's let's move on to the music, mate. So how how's it all going? It's like your third album now. You got a new one out yeah. now, yeah. Third album, out in June. Um, yeah, the first single is, I released there like a while ago, and it's. The reaction to it's been mad. Good tune. Yeah. Good tune. You're not just saying it. No, it honestly not, is. Yeah. Good tune. This is what I feel everyone says to Niall <laughs> a lot. And I even seen it at my work. It's like people go and go, mate, it's such a good song. And he's like, oh yeah, thanks. And people are always like, no, 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 like, but seriously, it's a, <laughs> it's a good song. Yeah. And I think this is the same with yeah. the album, right? You must be so proud of it. Yeah, well, I've worked on it for ages. You know, after the pandemic, it took me a while to get going, <laughs> to be honest. Because I never really had like any sort of extended time off in my career, really. Mm. Probably since I was like, since I started a band, I never really had any. So I took that time and then started writing an album kind of halfway through 21 and then just took me about 18 months to get to get it finished. But um, yeah, I'm really proud of it. And just being back in the mix, because I spend all the time going to gigs and festivals and yeah. seeing other people uh, release music and do the award, watching the Brits and all that stuff. I'm just like jealous. I just want to be back in it. Like, want to get back do, in it. Do you know on a much smaller scale, right? That's how I feel. When we go on these stupid little breaks we have, right? We just go on for like months. <laughs> you get, like, I look you get the pissed podcast. off though. Right? Oh, I just look, I'm going, why are we not out there doing <laughs> yeah. podcast? Like, I enjoy it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're thinking, why, why are we not doing it? I know. It must feel like that. Yeah. It is. It, it's, you get, just get the overriding feeling. It's just pure jealousy. I want to be, I want to be around the mix and, you know, coming in to see you lot in the in the station and just doing this, like you know, you know, Niall, like with with this success you're having solo, right? Playing festivals and things like that. Yeah. Does it does that feel like you're doing the music that you've always? Is this like ambition stuff for you? Because I guess there's a difference now with the type of music and how you're mm. seen and how a couple of the other lads are seen as well from the band. Mm. It must feel great, right? Yeah, it's great. It's, it's just, it's, it's nice to be in the conversation, I suppose. And, and, you know, the fact that I'm doing festivals this summer is the most exciting thing. Uh, usually I've done the conventional thing where you stick an album out, you do the promotion for it, and then you just go on the road and disappear for a year. Yeah. Whereas I was like, this time I want to go and do festivals. I've never done them before. I'm a big festival fan. Mm. Where, where, um, are you, where are you going to be? We're doing like Isle of Wight. Oh, we're there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're there. Right. What, Please what day explain. Are you on? We're playing the night Robbie Williams is playing. I think it's the Friday. On the Friday. Yeah. Are you hanging around or not? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll Patchy. see you there. We'll do, we'll do the second one from right. there. Right. <laughs> we, should, we should definitely do that. There's yeah. amazing things that happen at the Isle of Wight Festival. That is, of course, where you sign for Burnley. Yeah, I did. I signed for Burnley. Yeah, you yeah, signed yeah. for Burnley? Sean Dyche was there. That and, is, uh, is the best story. I, I was at Stoke. And um, I remember we were just chatting and we were, Kasabian were on um, that like, and, and, and Sean Dyche, big Kasabian fan. And it was, we were sitting there and then Ab just goes to him, Stoke had just got, we just got relegated. And That's uh, right, yeah. Ab just goes to him, why don't you sign Pete? <laughs> and he went, <laughs> what, what, what's, what's your contract situation? And I went, well, I think, you know, it's, it's up at the end of the year. And he was like, Let's do it. <laughs> that is genius. How mad is that? I've like no idea. Ab was the agent. That she got twenty percent. How do you feel about signing our piece? <laughs> <laughs> he, he started playing in the Premier League again from a pissed-up conversation at the Isle of Wight. So it all One minute you went from Stoke relegated to playing <laughs> playing back. I was back in it. the Prem. I finished in the Prem. That like, is unbelievable. That's it, was, it was a it was a mad one. But I ended up on stage with, with Kasabian as well. That was uh, that was interesting. I'm over. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was doing all that. That was the tune. That is brilliant. Um, yeah, what a story that good is. Fun. Good fun. Sean Dyche. Sean Dyche. I feel like he's saying most players like that. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's one of them, isn't he? <laughs> great, great. That's Chris Wood, Wood's agent. Let's, let's get him for another yeah, contract. Then. But this good. is what's interesting. I can see a messy night out. Niall performs. Everyone's happy. Celebrate. Pete's just signed for another. Football club. Yeah, Where's yeah, Daishi yeah. now? Is uh, Everton. Everton. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that, Pete. Yeah, yeah. That'd be big if news. If we go up this it? season, will you play for Derby in the yeah, championship? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah mate. Do a job for Paul Warren. I think here. last 10, I reckon I could still do a job. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, 100%. Run round, cause carnage last 10. Are you still fit in some shape? Yeah, form? yeah, I feel, I feel good. Yeah. I don't feel like. You don't feel yeah. brittle or anything no, like no, that? No, no, no. I feel good. I still feel all right. Yeah, so we'll have a look at your stats and we'll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and the club will be in touch. 
<laughs> taking a very active role in recruitment this yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Busy. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort so, of obsessed with the similarities between you both in different careers, but success very young, yeah. and kind of how how you um, how you've developed mm. through that to be how you are now without going full diary of a CEO here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, Crouchy? Because yeah, yeah. you're both in two different industries, mm. but were very successful very young yeah. and uh, growing uh, up through that. How old were you when, when, when things right, properly kicked off? I was, I was 16 on The X Factor. Wow, that's, that's so young. Um, but yeah, I, I often thought that because I had a knee reconstruction 2014 and that's another story for after this maybe, <laughs> but I, I ended up doing all of my rehab at, at Cobham, at Chelsea's training ground. Mm. And I used to see all these lads that were the same age as me that were like top level Premier League footballers. I couldn't wrap my head around it. Like, but the, the similarities we had, they were playing in the Premier League on a Saturday. Mm. I was doing what I was doing and we were so young. I was probably at 20. You're looking at like Oscar and Hazard and all these lads, the same age as me. Yeah, I know what you mean in terms of the development of it. But what did yeah. you find weird about that? Was it just that they are footballers of such a high level, do you mean? Or do you just think it was just mad seeing so many young people at Yeah, this exactly, level, the young people like, and how like... We're, we're doing two completely different things. We've got a lot in common. There's a lot yeah. of similarities. Yeah, though. there is. There yeah. is, because think about like how old... So when you were, say, 16, 17, I'm thinking those early days where you're starting to get a bit of money and... Do you remember your flat? Where were you where your flat was yeah, inflatable yeah, yeah. furniture? Yeah, that was, like, that was Portsmouth. I was 19. Inflatable. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went to Portsmouth and I'm, I, because I'd been at QPR and I'd, I'd, I'd been living around here and um, I was staying at my mum and dad's and I was going training because it was just down the road. Yeah. And then the first time I moved out, I'm 19 and I, I just do what my mates are doing. My mates are at uni yeah. and they're on black furniture and they're on, you know, <laughs> but I'm earning good money, but I just didn't know what to do with it. I just kept it in the bank and thought, uh, I Save just, it up. I'd blow up furniture until I could get my, my, my new furniture, but then I just didn't bother getting new <laughs> furniture. So I ended up with, blow, I had one bed and I had blow up furniture with, with a blow up goal in it. And I was coming back from training, we were just no, you uh, were doing right. a bit of two-time. Like <laughs> Yeah, but no, he's got a, he's got the, what he's got there is a nineteen-year-old brain, sort of on, yeah. on on the money of. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Come well, you must, you must, you must have had a, a mad purchase. Give us a mad purchase when you first started earning good money, right? And you're young. Yeah, you um, must have had a ridiculous. I've got a couple, but not ridiculous. Like the, I, I'd be like s smart about it, but yeah. like the fact that I was like. I don't even feel bad even saying it, but like I bought a Range Rover and I was like, hey, yeah, yeah. that's mental to me now, yeah. you know, when I think about it. Mm. Or a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just felt, felt that's mental. What, did, what, did, what were you buying? No, I went to Lakeside and bought a um, piece of jewellery. <laughs> I walked through the door back home. My dad, my dad went, what the fuck is that on your wrist? <laughs> <laughs> what are you said, wearing? a new bangle, daddy. He went, get it off. I never want to see it again. And I put it in a drawer and never wore it ever again. That was the last time you've yeah, seen it. last time I've been seen. <laughs> I'd like to get it back out. You yeah, you should pull that one out now. Yeah. Pete, when you were young, um, I'm just thinking of like, you, you both got this mad success, early age. Um, so you're getting lots of money and you're like having your own place where a lot of other people wouldn't, but you're doing things that a 19 or a 20 year old would do. <laughs> which looking back now were probably a bit silly. There's one story I'm thinking of, but I can't remember if we talked about it on the podcast when you were in Portsmouth. Yeah, no, I was in Portsmouth, yeah. yeah. And I, did, yeah I, was, I, I opened the French doors and I remember put, putting a pizza box there and you could see it up in the pizza uh, and just hit, just hit drivers out to the sea. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> biodegradable balls, obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, oh, we um, looking after the environment, but yeah, we're also working on our drives. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> From, through a pizza. Did you ever do that at a hotel room? Uh, I've, don't think I've, don't think I've ever done that. that no. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's new my, idea. That's my next night out. <laughs> Do you know in the comparisons between football and, and music? Is there is there a tough place to go? Like you know when Stoke Away is like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Stoke Away. <laughs> we were say on a Tuesday night, like that's where you really find out. Oh. Like, like, do you go to like um, well, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and go? That's a tough place to go. <laughs> yeah. Uzbekistan, Get a boys. Uzbekistan on a Tuesday just, night. To be fair, for me, probably the probably the the festivals this summer will be a tough place to go. Yeah, mm. like you, there's going to be the, like the first a thousand people down the front will be mm. probably fans of mine. You know, like the people that get up to the barrier. Mm. But then after that, you're just looking at. George and his wellies going for a pint the, yeah. you know, at the back. He's hey, not, what's going on there? Yeah, that's 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 talking to Tuesday for us. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> will he, about will he buy the, the album or not? We'll yeah, never know. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, know. <laughs> that's a tough one. Thanks, George. No, no. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. You'll probably be watching as well just to see that reaction, yeah. right? Yeah, hundred percent. Looking out, trying to get some new fans and just watching people fall over the place with rain jackets on. Oh, I just think you're onto such a good thing at the moment. It's like I don't know what I ever expected you to do musically, yeah. and it's kind of weirdly this is it. Like okay. this is. Don't you think? Like yeah, it just yeah, matches agree, yeah. up with you and your personality and. Yeah, I think I think it's that you have to grow into that. I suppose. Yeah, you know, you spend you spend most of your twenties messing around, don't you? Like, and, like trying stuff out and all that. And I just feel like I got to a point there a couple of years ago, like around mid pandemic, where you start like thinking about bigger stuff, don't you? Yeah. Like in your in your early twenties, you don't you don't think too much, do you? You just no. kind of roll yeah. around with it. And I just kind of not that I wasn't concentrating or getting my head down on it before, but I feel more. This is what this is what I'm meant to be but, doing. But also, is this a point in your career? And imagine, Crouch, you you had the same at some point as well, where you can you actually choosing. It, it was like everything that happened was you growing up, and in theory, you could just enjoy that success. You could yeah. stop. You could you just focus on side projects mm. or other things that you do, and you do loads, right? Um, but you've gone out and chosen to do this. Yeah, it's a bit like going for that extra contract. Do you know mm. what I mean? Or, yeah, or you, you could have re you could have retired earlier than that and been done. Yeah, and but you so to you, go lo you love it. I don't think like uh, you know you're in a situation now. I'm, you know, I'm sure you know where you've done very very well. You like you don't have to do it, but it's you love it, right? Yeah. I, I it's the same with with football like, I, I, yeah. and this. You know, I love doing it, so mm. that's why we do it. I'm sure you're a, fo a footballer's career is generally. Like what, thirty mid thirties? Yeah, yeah. I retired thirty eight. I was lucky, you know, yeah, but you that's go, yeah. long for. But that's 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 a yeah. that's a good stretch for footballers. Yeah. I suppose music is as as long as you're relevant or <laughs> yeah. or you want to do it. I guess so. It's, yeah. I like I obviously feel young. So mm. well, yeah. could I? Notes, notes. I am an old one of the older ones now. When I go to like. I went to this Universal Music lunch a couple of weeks ago around the, based around the Grammys. I was the oldest artist there by about eight years. Yeah, <laughs> I am 29. That's crazy. <laughs> From a football perspective, does it feel a little bit like when Pirlo joined Juventus? Yeah. yeah. Everyone wrote him, wrote him off at AC Milan. They yeah, thought he yeah. was finito yeah. and he's yeah. come back and he played some, And he played some decent stuff too, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, pretty much same thing. I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone's wrote him off. To be yeah. fair, <laughs> but you know, it's it's that idea that Pirlo was this wonderful footballer and he's gone and grown and done something else from yeah, the start. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to the start of your both of your careers, you probably at one point described as a wonder kid, right? Mm. A wonder kid in your fields. What was the pressure around that like? No, for me, no, for me, I was like, I was a slow burner. You know what I mean? Like these boys were Michael Owen. Mm. You know, Wayne Rooney, like, burst on the scene. And that level, I don't think there's any, there's no way of coping with that. Mm. Is there? There's no, no one's done it as well. Like, you boys yeah. were so big. There's no book for it. Yeah, like, <laughs> there's no way of, there's no one can teach you that because no one's been there. Yeah, that's, that's true. Who did you play your, like, underage football with? Uh, Tottenham. No, but like with, um, did you play England? Uh, yeah, I played England. Age. Yeah, I was under 18. With who? Like, who was on that team? Um, well, my under 21 team was was pretty good, but like we had under 18, we had Ashley Cole, sort Jeez. of Deadly King. Um, God, I'm trying to think. Like, Is it Terry? Defoe Was it played. JT was, yeah. Bit older than that. Come a bit, yeah, a bit later, but yeah, we played yeah, before. Well, yeah, no, there, yeah, but there, there's just no, there's no, there's no book for it. Yeah, mm. if, it, if it hasn't been done like that in a while, then yeah. you, it's like you can just go to, you know, what's happening, McCartney. <laughs> I'm yeah. not saying that, you yeah. know, but that's what they were comparing it to, you know, yeah. it was like, oh, like... Well, the numbers are like that. Uh, I don't you know. know. Didn't well, you beat it's the, a different the story, and obviously, I'm not trying to. Um, that wasn't me comparing the One Direction to the Beatles, but yeah, like, that's what they were. That's the, the media were saying, you know. Mm. And it was like, "Oh, yeah, Paul, what's going on, man? Yeah. Uh, I need, to tell, <laughs> need a bit of advice." But the difference is, like, is, 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 is America, isn't it? It's, it's, it's like not many people can break America, but you boys, you know, did and are still doing. Mm. It's just a uh, yeah. It's when you when you grow up around here, like it's. That's the, it's the the holy grail, isn't it? To get to break mm. America or whatever. So I remember like being in New York, um, the day our first album went number one. I was in the back of a yellow taxi heading somewhere and found out that we were number one. And that, I remember that moment being like, "Oh my god, yeah. this is different." Yeah. What's it like yeah. over there? Like with you with fan wise and things like that. Is it is it is it more crazy or is it is it <laughs> yeah it's, similar? It's. Yeah, they're very like they're a passionate bunch. Yeah, they're just, it's a massive country, mm. so you might like conquer some of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, but it's um, yeah, it's it's very it's very good. I, I I enjoy it over there in the states. I play a lot of shows there every year. Have you done? Do you feel like um, I, I'm not even saying regret? I'm talking like when you that Champions League game, mm. you look back on that right, and you don't. I don't think you have regrets about the final. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
but it wasn't quiet. No, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's the, I suppose it's the pinnacle of my career, and then obviously, like, it didn't go to plan. Mm. So, um, thanks for bringing it up, though. No, it's all right. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, want, I didn't want to bring the mood down, but what, I, what I'm trying to do is, is fucking hell. No, I don't. don't. <laughs> Grouchy, you won a lot though. Like, you won a lot outside no, that. I, just, what I, was try, I think what I was trying to get at yeah. was more, you know, is there anything at all that you haven't done yeah, yet? Yeah, that's a good that you thing. Okay, I can see you go with that now. Do, do you see what I mean? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah, is there anything you want to do that you haven't done or is there anything that is, yeah. You... Oh, God. Um... I never really think like mad into the future. Obviously, I mean to be in the conversation around like the Grammys or something like that would be, yeah, that would be. Yeah, okay. there's a difference between being introed as Niall Horn and being introed as Grammy nominated Niall Horn. Okay, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? Just to be in the, you know, when you go on a chat show and they're like, that is nice. <laughs> that is, that is nice. <laughs> it's a nice touch. Yeah. I'd love that. Yeah, I just, yeah, that'd be mm. that'd probably be the the thing I'd love, one, love to do. Yeah, is that like your Ballon d'Or then? Yeah. The vision of like Michael Owen in early doors or Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah. Lionel Messi, the Grammys is the Ballon d'Or. Of yeah, music. I basically, isn't it? Yeah, or the, the World Cup of music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, I love it. Well, look, I, I think there's lots of similarities between the two. Mm. Um, I've, I've got to ask a question because I'm, I'm an into for golf as well. Yeah. Now, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I've got to ask. We still have to play. Yeah, yeah. Have we'll you get two it on. not we'll played together yet? No, we, no. we've organised it, we've sorted it now. We're gonna play. I just want to see this putting stroke from for myself. <laughs> I've modified it. I've Have you? modified it. Yeah, I've had to. Do you get clubs your own length? Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's none none of it is um, what you do. You know, it's none of it is conventional. <laughs> Weirdly enough, <laughs> but um, you know, my football wasn't conventional, yep. and, that, and, that, and that went okay. You know, that worked so off. my golf's not conventional. Um, none of it looks right, but um, my putting technique has to. He's had. I mean, I used to. I used yeah, to do. Yeah. Like, Have you seen the picture? I used to do the That's pendulum. The best. Yeah. But I've had to, I've had to refine it because yeah. basically, it was standing on the putting green. I'd have to go to people. Um, this is our part. Laugh now, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. we'll we'll get over it. Yeah, because you know, I don't want you laughing on my backswing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's slightly it's slightly better now. But obviously, you've got a management company, yeah, um, and obviously, it's doing great. Yeah, it's amazing, and obviously, it looks like you're doing things right. You know, you're taking it seriously, and you've got some good golfers. Yeah, we've got some great golfers. We've had um, quite a few wins over the last few years as well. We've got 13 players, uh, basically half and half men and women, um, and yeah, we have our own event on the European Tour as well, which is same prize uh, fun for men and women in the same tournament, which is like brilliant. the first of its kind in Europe, which was brilliant. We got players like Tyrrell Hatton and uh, who nearly. One at the weekend, yeah. and then we got like just on, just on yeah. the Tyrrell Hatton thing. I um, did I tell you I tried a golf lesson? Um, you know you're trying to get me into golf wasn't, a little wasn't bit. With Tyrrell Hatton was it? Well, Tyrrell Hatton's dad, it turned out. What? No, uh, no, but it, it's really bad. Just this, thinking, right? Capital paying him too much. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrrell Hatton as his coach. <laughs> I'm just sorry, just reminding me, just on a catch up thing. I had a golf lesson one, right? So I turned up. I was a bit nervous because I really want to get into it now. Because mm, you know what? Involved. I'm trying to like. I've got kids now and I just mm. want to be in a bit of place in my life and enjoy my weekends a bit and yeah. do all that right and um, so Crouch is like get into it get into it you know we can play some golf you know I, it's the ambition so went along for this one lesson turns out it's Till Hatton's dad right Jeff, good so Jeff. I've, I've turned up at his house so I'm a bit suspicious about the whole setup anyway because I'm like well how am I playing out of a sort of semi-detached in <laughs> I won't say where. oh he's got the thing in that <laughs> house isn't he yeah, yeah. he's got simulator. a garage with yeah. a simulator in right yeah. so I go in he looks at me takes one look at me like from I pick up one club and he looks at me and goes I can't teach you <laughs> and what? I was like what like my missus has bought me golf lessons like she bought it for me yeah. it's like I can't teach you and I was like what, what why and he goes you're a lefty aren't you and his simulator wasn't set up for a lefty at the time no, so I had I to leave and it, like my only experience of having a golf lesson has been <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, god! Jeff, you need to get a you need to get a left-handed simulator. It was like we can practice without the clubs, but I was like, that's not going to go anywhere, is it? Even oh <laughs> just, just air. Oh my god! So you actually left? So I left, mate. Oh, that's I, brilliant. I've not done one since. No way. That is so good. I'd love to get into it. Yeah, you should. Uh, yeah. Keep it going. Yeah. Huh? Do you think I should? Like, is yeah. it? Oh, mate, especially it. when you when you have kids as well. It's like it's the best. Really. I love my children, but I also like getting away from <laughs> yeah. them. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like going out in the middle of nowhere for four hours love with it. your mates. Phone in the bag. You know, phone mm. away. A couple mm. of beers after. You know, you compete. It's you know, it, it's a good it's a good game. Yeah. yeah. And everyone can play. Different levels can play against each other. 
Mm. Just you know, like we could a twenty handicapper can play with a six and still exactly. win. You know, like it's a. I just love it. I used to I, like. I always use it as the the this the great escape. You know, like mm. when there's madness going on, just being able to just go. So especially, but especially for someone like you, right? You yeah. play, you know, you, whatever you play, and there's fans everywhere, mm. and then you go out on a golf course and just get left alone oh, with brilliant. your pal. You, you ever found a fan in the bunker or something? <laughs> no, <we're>, no. <laughs> with a camera. No, no, definitely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Oh, yeah. I've seen oh, you. T- actually, t- I take that back. Actually, remember one one year uh, we went to Australia and we'd go to Australia in their summer. So playing like Jan Feb, we'd always tour Australia, mm-hmm. and it was a mad obsession with news crews and helicopters and anywhere we went, these like you'd see Channel Nine News and decided mm-hmm. it or the helicopter. this helicopter and it would be coming down to the point where the balls would be moving on the green. I remember we were playing playing golf and then. So we were on this par three and it got was close to the road, like, you know, in the corner mm-hmm. holes. And we went over and I could just see five or six, like, local news cameras in the bushes behind us. <laughs> we and me and Harry. Anyway, it was myself, Harry, and our photographer at the time. And with the three of us hit the worst shots you've ever seen. But <laughs> we said before we'd hit it, we pretend we all got a hole in one just for the news. Ah, <laughs> awesome, awesome. We were all jumping around like <laughs> did, it, did it make the news? Yeah, of course. Hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> we had that. We had that before the World Cup. I remember playing with, um, at the World Cup and before the World Cup and there was people in the bushes and stuff and that's where the putting picture came from. Is that what yeah, that is? Yeah, some little rat in the bush. <laughs> and I... And I <laughs> I was like that, obviously, with the pendulum. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've turned, I've heard loads of clicking. I thought, what are you going on? I turned around, I went, no, not the player. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Oh, I was going, get me doing a drive or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I was going, that's going viral. Yeah, take that again, delete them. I'll do, I'll do something else. <laughs> Let me do something else. <laughs> You know, like I was thinking, you know, with a, with a, as a footballer, like when you're touring, as a footballer, like you'll have a, a you know a set routine with your meal before, say, a gig yeah. or, or a match, and also when you're touring, you know, as a footballer, I remember you get on the plane and you, sometimes you don't, you just don't even know where you are. You just like you get there, you see the hotel, yeah. you're back on the bus, you're at the airport and you're gone. Yeah. Is yeah. that the same when you're gigging? There, yeah, there can be. I've always like said to myself from day one that I was going to try and stay. I, like as present as I'd like you know like, I love yeah. travelling the world I love the especially when you tour Europe you're waking up in a different city every day with a different language like you'd go to bed in Germany and wake up in Sweden like yeah. and it'd be a completely different place that's like, uh, that stuff is where I love it it's, it's incredible yeah. different look and crowd everything but like I try and do like get into a bit of a routine on tour I get up in the morning do a bit half a workout or play around the golf in the morning or something mm. then come back and have a bit of food and then pre-gig uh, actually on the last tour we basically people asked us what was what's on your rider and we were like we need two bike racks and they're like what yeah, you know those like racks at the front of like yeah. a gig you know down the front and they were like why is that so we would chalk out like a foot tennis thing at the, in the car park at the, oh, whatever great. gig we were playing nice. and me myself and the band and the tour manager were, that's what we'd do right like, up so head, tennis. Good at that. head tennis yeah, oh, yeah. decent yeah, you've got the two table touch. for that I've got a what's, tech ball yeah. oh you've got that yeah, 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 yeah. so you've got to get you around for, for a tech 100%. ball game yeah, it's, and, then, ask... and then I kind of treat the pre-gig like a, like a night out like I, tr- I try and like I always always have a shower, even if I had one like three hours previous to that. Just before, I, yeah, just yeah, before. Same as me, yeah, I'd always. And even like brush my teeth and spread myself. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I did that. And then just like treat it as we're going on a night out, get together with the band, have a little jam, and like try and get each other hyped up, listen to tunes. Uh, and... yeah. do, do you have a kip in the middle of the day? So like, say you get up early, right? You're like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Like, as a football, like, like, like a late game. Like, like, yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. this is mental. Like, he thinks it's yeah. insane. Like, he thinks it's madness. Yeah. Can you imagine a whole Liverpool squad we'll go to having a little nap? <laughs> yeah. And Benitez tucking them in. Yeah, going, yeah. Peter, go to sleep. Three o'clock. Do you do that or not? Do you know what? Once I'm up, I'm up. But I remember oh. doing, uh, I'm good mates with Robbie Keane. Yeah. And I remember going doing soccer at the first year with him. And in the daytime, uh, I went into his room. He had, he had two single beds in it. And he just, he walks in. Like, yeah, he's like, right. come in here and we'll have a chat and a cup of tea, a biscuit. Before I knew it, he'd like close the curtains and he was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> he was like tucked up in the corner. I said, what's this fella doing? <laughs> you know what? It's, it's, what, it's what, what they do. It's it's become, it becomes the norm, doesn't yeah. it? You know, like for me, I was, I mean, with uh, Liverpool, like we'd have, we'd have a Champions League game. We'd have AC Milan on, uh, you know, uh, court to eight. But we'd, me and, I'd always room with Steve Finnan, Irish, yeah. you know, Irish boy. And then we, we'd just get in a little single bed at um, Melwood, at the training ground. And then um, I'd say, night, Steve. And then we'd... <laughs> 
<laughs> nah. Don't judge you for We'd have a kid. Good night, John boy. <laughs> I, I think and this is mental. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So what is it? Is it like post lunch nap? Is it like? Do you know what? And then you come honestly when you wake up, you know, like, we go down, you have a shower and that, yeah. and then you're like right, and you're pumped. You know, sometimes I'd be so nervous in the early days of England, like I'd be so nervous. I'd be sitting there, um, like in pin, well, lying in bed, and I'd just go, oh, like we've got say Spain at Old Trafford later, and I'd be like going, well, I could just stay in here, yeah, and yeah. like. <laughs> And no one would. Well, no one would know. No one would know. <laughs> and like, I'd have no nerves, and like, I wouldn't fuck up, and like, it'd be so I could just, yeah, yeah. you know, like sometimes yeah. you go like, you don't want to go to work or something. I'm going like, I've got a face, you know. Would you get like mad, mad, like how nervous are we talking? Yeah, like early days, early days, really, really like nervous. But then as soon as I got on the pitch, it was gone. Yeah. But like it's beforehand, the butterflies. I remember going being on a bus and like going to the, one of my first England games. You've the magnitude of an England games, everyone's watching mm. the whole. And then you're driving through, and then I remember looking at a fella in a pub, right, and from the bus. And I, you know, got Beckham, you know, Lampard, like, Gerard, right. And I'm, and I'm just looking at him, going, "Cool, I was that fella." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I always imagine that he got to rep know, represent the three lions. Just, <laughs> Do you know what? This lad in a pub. This, this lad in a pub's got a beer and he's watching the screen. He doesn't oh, know mate, the bus has come well, behind yeah, him. And the know. team's going, "Oh, I wish I was oh. you." <laughs> That is brilliant. Well, I, isn't it? I know that's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So, I mean, I know it's absolutely, and he would shade in yeah. a second. Um, but for that split second, you know, I'm just oh, thinking he hasn't it. got a care in the world, that yeah. fella. We're going to be got, nailed oh, in the yeah. press tomorrow. <laughs> no, you've got to go. And thank you so much for yeah. being on. And we've got to say, like, I know you always stick up for this podcast and you've said you've wanted to do it for yeah. a while and hopefully we can do it again when we're we should, yeah. proper booze mm -hmm. um, and some amazing stories. And you always pass the pod. I guess one thing, if we can ask it, one of your live shows, if you can help pass the pod by just whacking on a couple of shinnies. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> no problem. Imagine me wearing a pair of slacks like this <laughs> with, the, with these shoes on. Do you know what? You wouldn't it, even have to see them, but we'd know. Do we'd you know, know. And like, everyone we, Just a little know, pair of shin know. pads. I think, uh, we, we think you're going to have to come on with me at Isle of Wight. We're going to have to make this yeah, a thing that every time, <laughs> every time you go to, we go to Isle of Wight, you boys just... Will you do Isle of Wight and shin pads? <laughs> I do a song. Do a song. Do a song. Yeah. I think if you come out, and you, you come out. Just said, yeah, one hundred percent. I'll be there. Yeah. I'll be there. You have to come out on, for, on stage out. for one. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I do. Bring there. <laughs> we bring we bring you on for slow hands. Yeah, yeah. Slow it's hands. A bit of you, that one. Bit of me. Perishing pads on. And we do yeah, the done. robot to slow hands. Oh, yeah, mate. It's not a problem. I'll do. You know, I'll do that for you. No problem. <laughs> in, in private and in public. <laughs> <laughs> when, we, when we settle down after this and have our, you know, afternoon nap. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Once we wake up from our little nana nap. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, mate. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks very no, much. Really good. Yeah, and good luck with the album, mate. You know, we're loving the first tune and, you know, can't wait to hear the rest of it. Thanks very much, yeah. lads. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon. <laughs>